Welcome to Lecture 10, Agronomy, a Subject Summary. This lecture gives a summary of the subject that we have explored this year. This subject is offered as part of the Agricultural Degree at North Melbourne Institute of TAFE, an education institution based in Australia. Please visit our website www.nmit.edu.au for further details on our subject, courses and educational products that we offer. My name is Dr Nikki Cooley. In this lecture I hope to give an overview of the subject and <coughs> review the aims. I will explore the skills that you have acquired during this subject, followed by some thoughts and recommendations of what might be good for you to think about if you wish to explore a career in agronomy. I will then talk about how themes from this subject can be put together and you may wish to think of it in a holistic manner, that is, across several areas. I will finish the lecture with some concluding remarks. The aims of this subject was for you to develop knowledge of the practice of agronomy as an interdisciplinary study that underpins sustainable agricultural plant production practices. You would have gained skills in measuring crop and pasture growth and yield, along with examining biotic factors such as climate and how they impact on your crop and pasture performance. Sustainable agricultural plant production practices are explored along with technical and support roles. In the first lecture in this subject, you were introduced to the subject what you can expect to learn, your assessments and some support material. Lectures 2 through to 9 delivered some of the content and they were often complemented by practicals and tutorials. In Lecture 2 you were introduced to agronomy, the basics for plant growth and the role of Australian climate in agronomy were introduced the main inputs of climate, soil topography aspect use, plant type variety cultivar, plant traits and resistance, tolerances and growth habit and legal aspects where applicable were also explored. The climate inputs such as sun, light, rain, wind, temperature, humidity and evaporative transpiration were looked at in detail. Also, themes of variation and timing of these inputs were covered. Modification of the Copland system and how this can be used in agricultural situ situations were introduced, along with the valuable resource of the meter of um, the Bureau of Meteorology, or BOM for short. In lecture three, the topic of plant selection was introduced. We started this lecture with an introduction to the Australian agronomy. What crops are important to Australia? An introduction of the concept of productivity and com commodities of agronomy and crops. Much of the information was based on data from the Australian Bureau of Statistics or ABS. This is another excellent resource when you are investigating commodities. Inputs that should be considered when selecting a variety were covered there were six main inputs commodities, climate, environment, management inputs, physiological adaptations and pest and diseases. Crop classification was presented along with the yin yang visits and the southern, uh, the, the southern farming systems field day. These should all enable students with good crop identification skill sets. Some weed species were briefly discussed at the practicals of the yin yang. A list of important resources were accom accompanied with this lecture and in tutorial two a crop selection exercise was conducted. Lecture four was on the topic of crop physiology. What are the inputs required for crop growth? You were introduced and should understand photosynthesis different metabolisms such as C3, C4 and CAM, 
understand growth and different types of growth, along with crop development. A case study on wheat which complemented these concepts was introduced in this lecture. An important skill that you acquired in this subject was how to identify the crop stage or a specific crop stage. This was introduced both in concept and practice and this is very important in management practices. Tutorial 3 is where you learn how to use data in agronomy and interpret this data meaningful, in a meaningful way. Lectures 5 and 6 were on the general topics of agronomy management. It was started with important tools for crop management as the measurement of crop growth. The concepts of crop growth measurement were introduced and explored at length in the practicals. Yield potential and quality were also covered. And how does this relate both quality and yield in management? In this series, a number of lectures in 6, 6 1 to 6 6 on cropping management were introduced. This went into some detail of cropping management, pasture management, grazing and fodder conversion. Also within these, management of nutrients, water, soil and tillage were also introduced. Tutorial 5 on tilling practices and a tutorial 6 on cropping systems complemented these topics. Lecture 7 was on the area of soils and this includes specifically understanding about soil texture, soil structure, soil pH, soil cation exchange capacity and soil fertility. Why and how are these important in agronomy management should be clear to you now. A practical looking at soil fertility and nitrogen application also supported these concepts. Tutorial 7 was on soil salinity and explored this in some depth. Lectures 8 and 9 complemented and finalised this subject with looking at fertility. The science and the components. It should be noted that more details in this subject area will be covered in, this top, in the subject plant soil and plant nutrition. Inputs of nitrogen, phosphate and potassium were also covered in some detail in Lecture 9. Therefore, from this course and subject, you should be able to describe different crop and pasture establishment management options, demonstrate your knowledge of the fundamental aspects of plant biology to agricultural plant practices, develop a crop and, and or pasture establishment plan as you did in your assessment, measure plant growth and yield, yield components on crops and pastures, identify common weeds, insects, and some disease and pastures, although this will be covered in more depth in agronomy too. And finally, discuss the range of management options available to control weeds, pests and disease of some crops and pastures. Again, we touched on this in this subject, but will be dealt with in depth in agronomy too. In this subject, you will have acquired a number of skills some of these will include an introduction to the scientific method and how apply this applies in agronomy. An introduction to applied agronomical research. This is both from a conceptual point of view and also from laying out and collecting data in a real applied experiment conducted during this subject. You would have understood and, and been introduced to cropping and pasture systems. We also looked at an introduction to impacts into agronomy such as climates and weather, the soil influences, plant selection, agronomical commodities and pathways to markets, plant health and finally plant nutrition. If you have enjoyed learning about agronomy and are seriously considering undertaking a career in agronomy, 
then I would like to talk about some of the pathways you might consider. If you're undertaking the associate degree or the degree in agriculture with or without the agronomy major, some additional qualifications that are very complementary are the chemical certification offered by VET programs and also tractor competency also offered by VET programs. If you are a domestic student, these programs can be cheap if you do this before graduation. If you are an international student, you may be better suited to be certified for these skills in the chosen country where you hope to pursue your career. However, if that chosen country is a country that exports to Australia or you are thinking of opening a pathway to Australia in exports, then you might want to think about certification here and in other qualifications that allow you to understand Australian farming standards and how you can comply. Either way, a career in agronomy is very well complemented with chemical certification and tractor competency. Potential employers like to see this as these are two skill sets that are commonly required on farm and they do enable a pathway to employment. This subject, Agronomy 1, was an introduction to the concepts and the skill sets you need in order to pursue a career in agronomy. Agronomy 2 is a subject that complements and follows this subject. In this subject, if you choose to select it, you will be introduced to some new concepts. These include precision agriculture and agronomy, precision sampling, weed identification, GMOs, cropping disease research and integrated pest management. While some of the concepts that you have begun to learn about in Agronomy 1 will be explored in more detail in Agronomy 2 and these include climate impacts, soil management and nutrient management. I'd like you now to begin to think about the interactions of these topics that we have learnt in this subject to date. Firstly, when looking at interactions it is often best to start with a simple list of the important inputs. In this list I have added soils, climate, plant selection, crop physiology, pests and diseases, fertility and nutrients, and I have placed agronomy management in the middle. The first step in order to understand the holistic aspects of this system is to identify how the system is connected or interacts. So let us start by thinking about just the soils. So if you have a soil you obviously want to manage it so that you get the optimal yield and commodity or economic output that could be just yield for your crop or there could be a yield and quality component. So what are the things that influence or that soils can influence in our crop growing practices? Well the first thing that comes to mind is climate, particularly the inputs of temperature and rainfall, as both of these can specific, uh, significantly change the soil environment and influence our yield. Components such as the structure and the texture, the soil pH and the cation exchange capacity can all influence our ability to fertigate and have available nutrients for our crops. This in turn, and soils on themselves, can influence the prevalence and existence of disease and pests. The nutrient status, disease and pests, and climate can all influence the plant selection. That is both at the species level, variety and cultivar level. Selecting the best species and the best variety for your soils is paramount. You will notice that both that these arrows or lines have arrows in both directions and that's because they are influenced in both ways. 
This gives you some kind of idea about the complexity or holistic nature of agronomy. Now that you have understand the basics of thinking of your agronomy or your inputs as a system, you might want to try the same using the side template but do it for yield. Yield would fit under the crop physiology section and you would ask yourself how do I manage differently to alter my yield? How does crop selection influence yield? How does climate? How does soil? How does fertil fertility and nutrients? And how can disease and pests? When you consider all of these components together and how they interact, this will reinforce your understanding of the holistic and complicated nature of agronomy. This will enable you and help you in your revision on this subject. And I will end this lecture with an overview about the upcoming exam. All aspects of this subject can be assessed. This include the practicals, lectures, tutorials and the recommended reading. But only the recommended reading that is associated or accompanied with a specific lecture. Generic recommended reading lists as per lecture 1 are not included. The exam will be separated into three sections. You will start with the multi-choice section. There are 30 questions and each question is worth one mark. The style of these questions are very similar to the style of the agronomy and climate quiz that is posted on Moodle in week one. The second section, section B, is a selection of short answer questions. This is worth a total of 50 marks. The answers for these questions will be will range in the length from a couple of words through to several paragraphs. Please use the space provided as a guide to how long your answer should be. And finally, there is a long answer section. This is section C and worth 20% of the exam. On average, you are required to write about one page to answer this question, although that will de de depend and vary, depend on how concise your writing technique may be. You will be required to answer all questions in this section. And I would like to finish with a thank you. That is, a thank you to all the students who have participated in this subject. I have enjoyed getting to know you all. I hope that you have learned some interesting and important concepts and skills in agronomy. I wish you all the best in your future studies and your future career. And I look forward to teaching you in other subjects at NMIT. This brings us both to the end of this lecture and the end of this subject. Thank you.